Hey, how's it going everyone? Jeremy Langlois here from Homeless House Estate and Gardens. So glad you were able to join us here today. And we're in our Neptune uh, ballroom here at Homeless House. It's just a beautiful summer day, a little too hot to be outside, but that's okay. We're inside, we're cooking, but I have a great dish that we can serve on a hot summer day. So what we're gonna be making today is, this is one of my favorite dishes. Um, it's, it's a tuna crudo. And what crudo means is, first of all, crudo is Italian. We're doing Italian today. But this is a, this is a classic Italian. Crudo is Italian for the word raw. So we're going to be doing, so you could have scallops crudo, red snapper crudo. Today we're going to be using tuna, and we're going to be doing tuna crudo. Now, if for some reason you're like, ooh, if, you, if I've already lost you, and you're like, raw, I, I don't do raw, well, I got you with that too. We're going to pan sear some tuna as well. So, uh, and then we're going to do a pan seared uh, tuna that, that we can plate up and do the exact same dish. It just won't be raw. It will be seared on the outside. So actually, let's go ahead and uh, get that started first. So first, I want y'all to look at this. I have some absolutely gorgeous, fresh uh, yellowfin tuna. And that's what you want to use. This is a dish that you want just the freshest ingredients. You want to go, you want to get it from the market that day, come home and use it. You don't want it to let, let it sit out in the freezer or your freezer, the refrigerator uh, overnight and have it to start to oxidize. This is all about simplicity and freshness. And that's one thing that I really enjoy. Last week we did a caprese salad, which is just tomatoes, mozzarella, and uh, olive oil. And today we're doing this and they're both Italian. And it's a great example of what I really like about classic Italian cuisine. And it's that you don't manipulate it too much. You don't have to do too many things to it. While I probably my favorite cuisine is French cuisine, you'll notice oftentimes that food is very manipulated. And when I say the word manipulated, what I mean is you're braising something, you're cutting something down, you're really preparing it. This, we're just gonna use absolutely fresh ingredients, not do much to it. And then because the ingredients is so fresh, you don't have to. It's perfect and ready to go as is. So, so you'll see once we have, other than cutting some onions, this is all very simple. Let's go ahead and get this piece of tuna searing real quick. Uh, so again, really fresh tuna. I'm just going to season it with some salt and black pepper. And I'm going to quickly sear this for about 30 seconds or a minute on each side. And again, going back to tuna crudo, crudo meaning raw. Now again, don't, because this is so fresh, don't let that scare you too much. Um, I can speak for it, I know she's watching my mother. She's had this dish, absolutely loved it. And this is a woman that when I grow up, I don't think I ever ate a ribeye that wasn't well done. That's how we did it in the Langua house when I was young. And it wasn't until I started cooking, I was like, maybe you should try it. And at first we went from well done to medium on the steaks or, or mid well, and then, then eventually now they order their steaks medium. I'm so proud, mom. But, uh, but so, so if she can, she was willing to try this dish, I really suggest you out there as well. I'm gonna start off uh, for the pan seared version. I got a piece of tuna. And what I did is I really like to cut the tuna. Anytime I'm gonna pan sear tuna, I like to cut the tuna kind of, you see it's kind of cut in a block. That's a part for presentation, but it also allows as I sear it, I'm gonna rotate it on each side. And because we're just doing a quick sear on each side with it being cut uniformly, it's gonna be cooked evenly throughout. So that's one tip that we can do. And then some good olive oil, and we're gonna go right there, good sizzle. We're gonna let that start to sear. And while that's searing, we're gonna go back to the actual tuna crudo itself. So again, beautiful, fresh tuna. I'm just gonna take, and I've already got some going here, but I'm just gonna take it, and what you wanna do, which is key, is I'm literally trying, nice sharp knife, and I want this to, I wanna cut this as thinly as possible because the last thing we want to do is we don't want, we're not going to have these big chunks of raw tuna. We want it to be nice, light and delicate and just kind of cut real thinly. So I'm just slicing those real thin and I'm going to arrange it here on a plate. I like to kind of arrange them nice and evenly, nice and flat, almost like a carpaccio, which is kind of the meat version, a raw meat version of this. Let me come back to our tuna here and kind of check this out. Give that a little flip, just a good sear on each side. And now, just one little thing we need to prep and we're good to go. I have lemon, a little juicer here, just to catch the lemon juice. I already started juicing some. I'm gonna juice a lemon, catch all that good juice. And this is what I call a simple vinaigrette. 
Just like when you make a salad, a, a, a basic vinaigrette is always, um, your ratio is you always wanna have three parts olive oil or oil to one part vinegar. Well, I'm not using vinegar, I'm using lemon juice in its place. And so I got lemon juice and I got olive oil. Simple because it's literally just gonna be those ingredients, um, olive oil and lemon juice. I'm actually gonna pull this tuna off and let it rest. Just wanted to sear it just like you saw in real time, 30 seconds on each side. So it's good, nice and rare. Of course, based on preference, you could cook this longer as, as you like. Uh, back to the vinaigrette. Now you can put this in a bowl, but I wanna show you, I always like showing kind of behind the scenes of how we do this in the restaurant. And one of the things that we do is we uh, use a lot of these little squeeze bottles. So we're gonna take and pour that lemon juice right in here. And I'm just eyeballing it, guys. Little, little vinegar and a little bit of olive oil. Of course, if it was for the restaurant, we'd do a little more. And again, I'm looking for three to one. So I, I'm just eyeballing it for how much. So I got one part of that lemon juice and I just wanna have triple the amount of olive oil in here. I'm gonna put this into this bottle Right before I use it, I'm going to get a, do a good shake, but this is as simple as it gets. A simple vinaigrette, lemon juice, olive oil, nothing else. All about simplicity, all about freshness. Uh, now we're going to come back to the tuna, and now what we want to do is we're just going to take this and we're going to start to season and flavor this. So I'm starting off, this is where if you have it, you want to bust out a little sea salt, only because tuna, seafood, sea salt from the ocean. It just matches, it just makes sense and it matches so perfectly. So we're gonna have a little salt and a little pepper. Again, I go over this, all, I feel like every video, salt and pepper is so critical to really getting your flavors to pop and sing. So just a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper right here on the tuna. Now what we're gonna do, I have, y'all know these, let me show you what I got here. Red pepper flakes that you see at every pizzeria next to the little Parmesan. This is where you want to be careful, guys, because this really is going to add a little bit of heat and flavor to these natural ingredients, but you can ruin your dish very easily if you put too much of this on it because it's so spicy. So just very delicately, just drop in a couple flecks. I would start off slow, taste it, and of course, if you like more, always come back later and put a little more of those red pepper flakes back on it. Now what we're going to do is, we got the salt, the pepper, and the red, pe the red pepper flakes. Now what we want to do is dress this tuna with the vinaigrette. And I really go fairly generous on this and really get that good olive oil and lemon juice. This is really kind of going to make a good marinade for, for this. Now it's just a matter of adding some nice fresh ingredients. So this is a little diced shallots. Again, Italian, some fresh capers. Kalamata olives. Any olive you like is good here. Whether it's just traditional black sliced olives, green olives, if you go to these olive bars, any olives that you like, it's great. I like uh, pitted Kal Kalamata olives because I just think they have a really great flavor that matches this good. But they are a little strong, so if you don't like that, you could use something else. Little olives right on top. And now we're pretty close to being done. What we're gonna do is, I always like to put, we have these microgreens that we, that we uh, buy from the farmer's market, which are just sprouted little herbs, but you could very, very easily substitute this with some chopped fresh basil uh, or any kind of nice fresh summer herbs. And now this is where, this is, this would, this is normally you could stop here and this in its sense is a very classic tuna crudo. But I like to just enliven it with just a couple more ingredients uh, that I find really just elevate the dish a little bit more. The first of all, and this might seem unusual, but uh, what, we're, what I have here is this is whipped cream. Now don't get thinking that's too crazy just yet. I'm gonna put a couple dollops of it. This is unsweetened. So this isn't Cool Whip. Uh, this, is, this is unsweetened cream. Now, Jeremy, why are we putting whipped cream on fish? Well, because we have these rich, strong, acidic flavors in the olive oil that's going on here, just adding a touch of this cream whenever you cut everything and mix it, 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 it almost acts like a foil to the acidity. You got the really acidic lemon juice. Now you're gonna add just a little touch of this whipped cream and when it mixes, it just mellows all the flavors and brings all the flavors together. And then one touch that I like to add, you don't have to do this at home. You can find this now at some specialty seafood stores and even certain grocery stores around Louisiana. I see it all the time is I'm gonna add a little bit of shoe pick caviar on top. I always love introducing Louisiana flavors to any dish that we do. I love caviar, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of this shoe pick caviar 
right on top. And, and it just really helps add that great seafood flavor like it's from the ocean. And this caviar, guys, is really fantastic. In fact, years ago, there was an article in the New York Times or uh, the Washington Post, I forget which one, but big publication. What this is so similar to Belugra caviar, which is the highest end caviar that you could buy. Um, this, is, this is that steel, same style caviar, which is a steel toe caviar. What restaurants were actually busted doing was uh, they were taking beluga caviar, then mixing some of this right here from Louisiana caviar, Russian caviar, they were mixing this Louisiana caviar and stretching out that caviar. Well, why were they doing it? Well, we can get this for about $40 a bottle, whereas beluga caviar would be about anywhere from $500 to $700 a bottle. So they were actually stretching it with this really great quack caviar that we have right here in our backyard. So this is how we serve it at the restaurant when we do our tuna crudo, that's right there. Now let's go back to our pan sear tuna and we're gonna do it the same way, but we'll show the difference of what it looks like whenever we pan sear. So again, we have the tuna that we just seared very quickly on each side. And we're just gonna slice this into little cubes. Just give them a quick little cut. Again, your preference on how you like your tuna cooked, but this is nice and rare. However, if you'd like your tuna cooked more, cooked more, and we're gonna do the same thing. Even though we were able to put a little seasoning on the outside, it's not seasoned on the inside, so we're gonna come back with those same ingredients. Little bit of this red pepper flake, some of that great sea salt, little cracked black pepper, diced shallots, capers, some of these Kalamata olives. And now we're gonna dress it with our vinaigrette real nice. And then let's go back to our microgreens that we get from our Baton Rouge Farmer's Market. Shout out to uh, Wholesome Foods. We love those guys. Um, I actually, I forgot to put these on here. I really like different kind of capers. These are the large Italian capers. We're cooking Italian, so let's, let's get a couple of these on here. And then again, to finish it off, we're gonna add just a little dollop, just a little pinch of some of this whipped cream right here. And then finally top it off with our shoe pit caviar. Again, guys, this is all about freshness. You can go in any direction. I use tuna, use any great fish that you like, use scallops. Um, you can even do a cold version where instead of doing this, you could just have cooked shrimp and then try combining all these flavors because that's really great. It goes great with any seafood, but there you have it. Tuna, two ways, crudo style, pan seared. Uh, thank you all so much for joining in. Comment below if you've ever had crudo or if you like dishes that are raw like tuna tartare or steak tartare. Would love to hear uh, what you like and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much.